Yo, 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 what up, juicers? Welcome to episode 27 of the Juice Box Podcast. Uh, dudes, this is uh, this has been a really cool episode for me. Um, I'm really excited for you guys to listen to it. And although it's kind of a, uh, a bummer of a situation, the whole Chris D'Elia controversy, um, something cool I actually came out of it. I met somebody through Twitter who's from Wisconsin. His name is Chris Lynch. He's the host of the You Might Be Surprised podcast. It's a new podcast, but I, g- I gave it a listen, and I, I, I enjoy it. So if you guys are interested in another podcast, go check it out. Um, we pretty much just discussed the whole situation, you know, and uh, how shitty it is and how shitty it is to see somebody that you look up to go through some something pretty serious and terrible. Um, but if you guys are interested in that, please tune in. And um, yeah, we ha- I had a good time. It was really dope being able to connect with somebody else about comedy and podcasts that I listen to all the time. So that was dope, and I'm stoked for you guys to hear it. So, I appreciate you for listening, Juicers. Go check out his podcast. His name is Chris Lynch. Podcast you might be surprised. Enjoy the episode. Later. And we'll get it going, dude. All right, man. Chris. All right. We're here, dude. Dude, it's, it's so funny. We're like, here. It's so <laughs> funny talking over the Zoom because the fucking that I I don't I didn't know how I felt about the webcaming uh, podcast because of all the lagging and stuff. So it just seemed a yeah, little interesting. Sure. This is this is the first Zoom podcast that I've been doing ever, and hopefully, same. You know, it's so much nicer when they're just here. But we'll see. Um, sure. If I'm com- if I'm completely. Honest, I hate Zoom podcasts because they never yeah. seem to get the audio right. So I'm right. hoping we can we can do it. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, no, I think we'd be able to. Uh, but it's funny because like the internet is just like you're lagging right now, and you know it's just one of those things that's of just course. gonna happen. But it's fine. And uh, For sure. so so, anyways, um, guys, welcome to the Juice Box Podcast. Welcome to the Go Ahead and Name Your Podcast. You might be surprised. You podcast. might be surprised, dude. This is dope, man. We, you know, dude, it's so funny because you're probably the first person that I met on Twitter who is willingly to just be down to do a podcast. And that's so dope. That's like one of the coolest sure. things, especially because we're like across the fucking country. And that's insane. Yeah. And where are you at, man? I'm in California. Yeah. Oh, okay. And you know what is also shitty that I'll say really quick is uh, it's. It's pretty terrible the circumstances in which we met, but you know, it really is. It is what it is, dude, <laughs> and it's tough, dude. Ah. But before we get into that, so so for everybody listening, and I'm just speaking for my listeners, if and Chris's listeners too, um, we're gonna we're gonna really dive into the we're gonna dive into the Chris D'Elia, uh controversy that's going on right now. Um, but you guys were saying that you went to a comedy thing earlier. How was that going, dude? It was. Um... It was my first open mic and I didn't perform, but like, I, I was just going in there to see like, like what the vibe was. Right. And I went there and it was nothing what I expected. I mean, I guess I should have expected like, um, like I wasn't expecting like crisp comedy, right? but I also wasn't expecting there was this dude that went up and just had a book full of one-liners. No way. <laughs> and just went up, went up, and said four of them. And then he was like, "All right, that's my time." And, no. he, and got off. <laughs> Are you serious? Was it what was it like? Fucking twenty seconds? Holy shit! It was maybe like two minutes. Oh wow, yeah, dude. It was. Hey, you know what, man? There... I've done I've done one five minute set, and that was the longest five minutes I've ever been through. That's it's it's oh, I'm crazy. Sure. It's so crazy. Yeah. Have you guys been on stage? No, we're just, we're both really big fans. See, the only reason, or like he came up here because, uh, funny enough, we, I got him introduced to uh, Brendan Schaub about the Thick Boy Bike Club. Oh yeah, Thick Boy so Bike Club. So we were up here, gonna, yeah, we were up here going to ride the trails and his, uh, his uh, bike broke. Oh, no way. we're like, well... We might as well go see some comedy since we don't have anything else to do. <laughs> yeah, fuck, dude. 
That's that's insane. I yeah, I was telling you on uh, the Twitter messenger how I was trying to go get into the Thick Boy Bike Club, but then I saw how expensive the the goddamn mountain bikes were, and I was like, ah, dude, it's gonna have to wait a little bit. It's so funny. It's expensive, dude. It's crazy. I didn't realize how expensive a hobby that was. And you know. Yeah, it's it's intense, and also his merch is stupid expensive. But oh, I'd be I lying bet. if I didn't drop a hundred bucks on it. Did you actually? <laughs> would you get like two things? Uh, yeah, I got I got oh, a sweatshirt man. and the and uh, the sweatshirt and the shirt. <laughs> no way. Yeah, I was thinking about copping some shit too, but I figured Brendan Shaw is probably gonna be fucking super expensive. But it also is probably pretty quality, I would imagine. Yeah, um, it was. I had to return my uh, sweatshirt because it was a large and it was too uh, small and shit, shit. So that's the worst. Um, yeah. Hell yeah, dude. No, you know what? Uh, when I was when, when you mentioned doing this podcast, I gotta tell you, man, dude, I was I was stoked, really, for the reason that I don't really have anybody in my area that listens to the podcast like I do, and I've been so into really? them over the yeah, dude. I've been so into them over the past couple of years, and uh, I've been trying to put people on and on and on and on, and I just can't. And not that I can't. I just you know people don't listen to podcasts as much as I do, I guess. But to see somebody sure. who listens to like m- the majority of the same ones that I listen to, or at least Chris Alia and you know Brendan Shaw, the Fighter and the Kid, and all that stuff, so that was dope. I yeah. was like stoked about that. Um, it was good. It was. It, I was gonna say it was kind of weird. Just I didn't expect like I don't know about your tweets, but I was looking back at back at like just the people who saw my tweet because yeah. if you go back to like where we met, which was that uh fighting the. Cl- the fighter and the kid clip yeah, of uh them crying Shaw and stuff. Just they're talking about crying you. and stuff that was tough man my twitter or my uh tweet has reached 20,000 people oh really holy shit yes i don't even what is that I, how do you check that um if you click on your tweet it says like view tweets analytics oh okay yeah i haven't done yeah, that yeah and <laughs> I was just funny, curious. Dude. Isn't that I, insane? I looked at it. You know what's funny is uh, I feel like if I were to go onto my Twitter and check out the impressions, it would be like 20,000 whatevers and just no likes. That's usually how my life oh, goes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, man. That's so embarrassing. But it's all good, dude. Whatever. Um, it is what it is. So, yeah, man. Uh, for everybody who doesn't know, we 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 linked up on a tweet that was a video of the fighter and the kid, Brian Callen, Brennan Schaub, um, explaining, you know, the the shit that's going down with Chris D'Elia. And, dude, yeah, that was... I, I'm glad we're talking about it now, like, while it's still early, because who knows what's going to happen, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just... I don't know. It's, it's, it's funky. Yeah, I I talked about it in my solo episode that I did you yesterday and Oh really? My my only just response to it is just if it is true, just shame on him, especially coming from somebody who's just preached on being yourself and just having a good time and stuff. Yeah. It, it kind of hit it, it, it hits a little hurt. different, you know. It it really does. And it's also really tough. I mean, I uh, clearly I imagine you're into comedy a lot, and you're obviously a fan of his. So in oh, that yeah. in that aspect, it's like, okay, dude, I got I got one of the like one of the main guys that either you or I look up to, which I would imagine is probably in both cases, and your cousin too. Mm-hmm. Like we all look up to him, and in a way, like it's, if you're not gonna do comedy, whatever, but you still you can admire uh, his success and his talent in comedy and stuff like that. So that's all cool and mm-hmm. everything. And it just sucks when you see somebody that, you know, has all has like a, such an impact and they just they fuck up along the lines. And, you know, it, regardless of everything that's been put out on the on Twitter, on the Internet, whatever this and that, it's um, it's tough to see for sure. And, you know, if now, I mean, we can also dive into some of the allegations and stuff like that, but just all around in general and in the end, it's a pretty shitty thing to see one of your idols just be uh, accused of sexual misconduct for you know getting photos or asking for photos or whatever the fuck he did with like underage chicks and that's that's tough yeah man. you know that sucks and you know, it sucks for his fans and it sucks especially for him and his career forward you want to piss me off the most about the whole situation 
What's that? Was the photos that they used of Chris. They picked every photo that made him look like an idiot, like a, like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I noticed that. Me off. <laughs> the ones that TMZ posted. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's like people caught definitely off guard. think that he does drugs. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. I dude, you know what? I found out recently that he didn't do drugs, and that was insane. Uh, not recently, actually. You didn't know that? I, well, I knew that from the fighter and the kid, but just you know, I. I was kind of a early fan of his in a way. I didn't necessarily get too big into him, but I was into him enough where I was watching like Incorrigible and Man on Fire, and then I found out that he didn't do drugs or drink. And I was like, whoa, dude, mm-hmm. this guy seems like he's on 24-7, on something at least. Not only, you know? Yeah, he's stone yeah, cold dude. sober. I know, it's yeah, crazy, man. Like- Couldn't be me prior us either <laughs> Holy yeah shit. i mean college was something man let me tell you <laughs> dude so so let's let's uh for people i mean i imagine people that are tuning into this might be the folks from that thread or that might have any yeah. idea about what we're talking about but if people don't know what we're talking about chris lee is obviously one of the biggest comedians in you know out there right now he has to deal with netflix and he's been on a couple of shows and wait, even before i continue one thing that really pisses me off is seeing these tweets about him being on the show you playing like a pedophile and they're like oh it turns out he wasn't even acting and it's like all right dude shut yeah. the fuck up come on man that is so bu- i mean I, who knows dude but you know there there's been there's been uh, accusations towards him about um reaching out to underage girls and like asking for pictures and this and that. And all I got to say is dude, like based off of what's on the internet and what I've seen, because believe me, I've checked as far as I can. Oh yeah, me too. And you know, there's no proof of any kind of physical activity that might've gone down. And rather, you know, that aside, whatever he's being accused of, obviously of him being a 30 year old talking to a 16 year old, that's obviously not cool. Like, that shouldn't be a thing, mm-hmm. and people should know that. However, in those screenshots that are on the internet, he acknowledges that they're too young and then doesn't talk or doesn't continue it. And then the one that I've seen also is that they acknowledge their age, he acknowledged how young they were, and then responded, like, almost a year later. So it's really touching, mm-hmm. dude. It's really – it's it's a sticky situation for sure. Yeah. I, I don't – I think um, at first, like when I heard it, I was full on like this, this can't be true. But then the more that he was silent and just wasn't saying anything, it just led me to believe that it's true. But I don't think it's, I mean, it's obviously horrible that he did that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know. Is is your cousin saying something? I couldn't hear him. He was just saying that his lawyers are telling him to be quiet, which I don't think it's his lawyers. I think it's just him in general. There's well, no, like, you know, I was somebody, thinking uh, – sorry, go ahead. I was going to say somebody said, do you think he's going to post a podcast this week? I was like, what? Yeah, no. No? No, for sure. Why no. would he do that? Yeah. Well, you know, I was thinking a lot about it, and obviously the only people that have really spoken up about it because of the consistency of their podcast is the fighter and the kid. And – they said what they said, and however, I agree with you too. As far as him not saying or not speaking up about it soon, like you know, or I mean, he spoke to TMZ, but that's that was a very minor kind of um, response. And I think his fans kind of deserve a bigger response than what he gave. But obviously, he did that to just kind of to just do something at least, you know, not to stay completely silent. But, you know, I, I kind of agree with your cousin where his lawyers are telling him to kind of stay silent a little bit. And uh, I kind of I believe that. But at the same time, um, I think right now is just so sensitive of a time for him to really, you know, it's, it's like I said, it's a sticky subject, dude. And he it can, is. the only, I feel like the only reason he's not saying anything right away is because he might have like say he were to respond really soon he'd be speaking through maybe some kind of emotion and when you speak through emotion you're not thinking clearly so i'm Mm -hmm. not sure if maybe he's trying to like script a formal response which also would be kind of fake in a way 
But I think he's just trying to word his response the right way before he really says anything back. And I mean, I get it, but mm-hmm. also, like, this is such a serious topic. You probably should address it fully right when it happens. But, you know, it's easier said than done because, you know, I, I don't yeah. know. I don't know what that's like. And I'm not as big of a person as he is. You know, I'm not as famous, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's one of those things that this could be, this could destroy his career. And that's also another reason why he probably hasn't said anything because he, he might say the wrong thing. And mm-hmm. that could just, just, that could just fucking be the tip of the iceberg. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's tough, man. It's what do you say? He said he could end up worse than uh, Louis C.K. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> you know what though? I would say this is probably the case at hand is a little worse already because. Yeah, it definitely is. You know. Dealing with underage chicks versus beating off in front of a couple of aged chicks. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I don't know, dude. It's, yeah, it, like, you know, it sucks. It really does to see one of your guys, or one of our favorite guys, you know, go through something like this. But I'm really curious yeah. about, I'm, I, I'm ultimately curious about what this does to his career, you know. Um, I was when when it happened I was um I was curious on it made me think of the uh you're probably familiar with the Logan Paul situation um, and the only reason do you know what I'm the Are you talking about when he when recorded the guy in the dead forest or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, it yeah, made, yeah. made me think of that situation and how he um and how like the next day he recorded that video of him of that got turned into a meme of him saying he was sorry and stuff. Whoa, dude! There's and light, I was there's fireworks going off outside my window. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're all good. And I was and I was thinking that that I I was hoping that he wouldn't just jump on this the next day and just like throw out like a like a half ass a, a half like a, ass apology. apology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the only way he bounces back from this is if he real. I mean, it sounds like his from his team's statement that um, I forgot his exact words, but he said something along, along the lines of like he knew that he did it, or like I I don't even no, know. No, he, he said he, like yeah. No, I I know what you're saying. He he basically stated that. He he knows he's done some stuff in his past that people might not agree with and he apologizes for, but every relationship that he's been affiliated with has been both legal and consensual. So, yeah. I mean, you know, hey look, man, I I'm I try to go about this argument with an unbiased opinion. Now I say that, but people obviously know that I'm a really big fan of his. They probably now by mm-hmm. now picked up that you're also a really big fan of his. And for sure, we could we could both say that sure we're we're going about this conversation uh, with an unbiased you know perspective. But you know, at the end of the day, we're both we both look up to the guy. We're both big fans of his. He's he's inspired us to do this podcast, our both of our podcasts. And you yeah. know, at some at some point, you know, we might be in his favor a bit, and it might come off as that way. But ultimately, you know, you and I both know that. W- what he's being accused of is is terrible and should not be happening. Right. So let's it's just awful. let's just get that out of the way. However, yeah, for sure. You know, it's it's um, and also just to throw out there as well, uh, the whole calling out culture. I mean, hey, look, dude, if you've been assaulted in any way, you should you should feel that you can call out because it's obviously it's not. I hate to use the word trending, but it's a. I really hate to use this word trending, but it's it's a trend right now and rightfully so. Yeah. I think I think that you know, if you've been assaulted, you should be calling people out because they those people should either fucking facing the the repercussions that they deserve and they should be held accountable and this and that. It's just tough to yeah. see one of your guys, you know, one of your one of the guys you look up to and um yeah, man, I it's it's hard to see where it's going to go. It really is. But in yeah. a statement, you know, it was kind of I don't want to say it was a half-assed apology, but it kind of was. And I think, you know what, I, I, I would rather hear that than to not hear anything two days later being today. 
So that's that's true. Yeah. Um, speaking of it being a trend, not to switch the topics off of Chris, but did you see who uh, got uh, canceled today? No, who? The uh, baby driver character. Um, Ansel? Ansel. Ansel Adams, yeah. No way, he got, dude. What did this he guy got do? He canceled today, dude. He, what? so supposedly, um, from what I read, was he... Dude, he, faulting um, our stars, dude. Breaking our hearts. Out of, out of out of any person that I thought that would get canceled, he was on the bottom tier list for me. I, oh, for I sure, he was like the, dude. The Come precious on. dude. But Damn. supposedly, he like forced a 17-year-old to have sex with him. Jesus stuff. Christ. Yeah. So. Fuck, dude. Yeah. I mean, hey, you know what, though? You know what I got to say about that guy? Fuck him. Because I don't even care about him, dude. His movies suck. I'm just kidding. Exactly. So, <laughs> when somebody, so when somebody gets mad at us, if they're hearing this and, this, and they're like, why are they so biased towards Chris and Lee? It's because we're fans. And, like, it's, and it, it hurts seeing somebody that you care about, and especially somebody – if you don't listen to his podcast and stuff, the yeah. dude literally preaches just being yourself. Yeah. And having, having a silly, silly goose, goose time. time, dude. Hell yeah, dude. Fist <laughs> bump the fucking camera. That is so sick. We said For at the real. same time. No, you, you know what, dude? It is. And, it, and you know what? You know what I, you know what argument I really hate about shit when you're trying to back up like celebrities and stuff. And not even that he's like the biggest celebrity, but he's a celebrity. What I hate mm. that people say is, Oh, dude, that guy doesn't give a fuck about you. He doesn't even know who you are. Sure, of course not. But you know what, dude? The reason I listen to podcasts, ultimately, is because I like to feel like I'm a part of some kind of community. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we listen to podcasts, and we're, like, we're like in our cars listening and just laughing by ourselves, but we're laughing with them. It's like we feel like we're a part of something. And that's what I'm trying to tell people about podcasts that are so dope because like, mm-hmm. you know, especially during Corona, you know, like we don't get to see our friends as much or maybe you do, maybe you don't. I don't know. I personally, I haven't. A lot of my friends don't live around here, but um, mm-hmm. it's really dope to be listening to podcasts because you feel like you're involved in something, you know, and like some kind of circle or whatever. And when you see one of the main guys that you listen to get in trouble, it's like, fuck, man, that's like, that's like, it's almost like. And obviously he's not my friend, but it's almost like seeing one of your one of your best friends just fucking tank. And that's how that's how the response from Brennan Schaub and Brian Callen affected them because that's one of their best friends. And that that guy was the funniest guest on their podcast. And now he is on the verge mm-hmm. of losing his career. So, you know, yeah, you want good. You want to know it's something that just hit me that I, I can't believe I didn't think about this is if his opener, Mike. Ooh, has, uh, Mike Linochi, yeah. Said anything. Yeah. Damn, dude. Ooh. I I didn't think about that. I didn't I, I because I actually I think I looked I looked at it first when it first came out and yeah. he was silent and I don't know if he's said anything now. See, you know what's interesting because, about that is yeah. is uh when when Brendan and Brian were talking about it, they were saying that they don't know how he acted on the road because they don't tour with him. Yeah. Which raises, now that you said that, which I never even thought of, so props to you, is pretty fishy because he tours with them, obviously. Yeah. So, fuck me. But, I mean, you know, I'll say this. He was accused of that recently, and it came out, or that happened 10 years ago. So... Mm -hmm. And I mean, he just had a kid. I would imagine somewhere within the ten years, you know, maybe things change and he stopped being a lurk. But who knows? You know, I I don't know. But it, you know, now that you point that out, Mike being mm-hmm. silent just kind of for sure raises some eyebrows, which is interesting. Yeah, I also don't like the argument. I don't know if you've heard this one of just like, um, I mean, he should know like not to do that yeah, but i think there's sure. also something that comes when you become famous when every single person who's not a celebrity becomes a yes man especially with girls yeah. especially when you're good lo- 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 looking yeah 
so it's I'm I'm not saying I'm not using that as a defense for him, but I'm sure having your because I mean Chris has talked about not being very popular at all, and then to him being oh yeah one dude. of the best comedians his, out his there. His career went from zero to a hundred. I mean, it might have it might have not seemed like it did, but it almost kind of did. So yeah, but I mean, you know, you know, I we can both we can both agree that's no excuse. Yeah, no. you know, and I get what you're saying about. I mean, look, man, as as the first person who accused him of this has every right to put him on blast. I'm just curious as Mm -hmm. to why it happened. And I'm not trying to be insensitive. I'm really not trying to be. But not just with Chris D'Elia, but multiple celebrities like they get put on blast from shit that they did 10 years ago. Kevin Hart doing the Oscars put on blast for posting a tweet about gay stuff and he he doesn't he's not able to do the Oscars anymore. Like shit like that gets mm-hmm. dug up on celebrities and I I almost you know what, I don't know why, but I almost feel like it's just a way for people to try and it's just outrage culture, call out culture really. Not outrage, but call really out is. culture. And you know, like I was just listening on Joe Rogan today, like the world is not what it the world today as we know it is not what it was 10 years ago like think about the no. movie tropic thunder robert downey jr iron man playing blackface and no one yeah. gave a fuck <laughs> nobody gave a shit and no one still well, to this day is talking shit about it he's still iron man he's still like a great actor for sure. and no one's talking shit about it so it's like where where where's the line you know and mm, now granted i'm well, oh, sorry go ahead I was gonna say, well, uh, the 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 recent one that got brought up as blackface is uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, uh, or, doing yeah. the Chris Tucker thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah. that was it. Was it Jimmy Kimmel or Jimmy Fallon? Dude, I get the mix up. It was definitely it was, Fallon. Yeah, Jimmy Fallon, I think. But still, either way, yeah. two white guys, whatever, <laughs> doing blackface. Yeah. <laughs> God damn, man. You know what though? I've been seeing on Twitter a bunch of people doing blackface, and I'm just like. Fuck, dude! How long does that take to wash off? Cause I don't want to do that shit, dude. I'm never doing that. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. No. <laughs> nah, but yeah, dude. It's it's one of those things that I feel like, and I'm not I'm not speaking in terms of sexual misconduct with underage girls. I'm not talking about this at all right now. What I'm about to say, but I think that a lot of people who are super successful in the entertainment business or um you know whatever uh. At some point, somebody somebody on the internet is going to go dig deep on anything that they do on Twitter, Facebook, every kind of oh, social yeah. media, and they're just going to dig up dirt for absolutely no reason, you know? For sure. And I think all of us, it's, all of us have said shit within the past ten years that would probably get us all in trouble. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? The world's a, like some of the stuff you could say five years ago, you can't say now. I I would say probably ninety percent of it. <laughs> yeah, you it's, know what I mean. It's, I mean, it's 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 insane, it's, dude. It really is. But yeah, that's just the world that we know. live in now, and that's the world that we got to adjust to. So. What's your favorite Chris D'Elia bit? Oh yeah. Oh man, I gotta say, uh, my favorite bit that he did was my well, my all. I don't know about my all time, but my most recent one is from No Pain. It was the one with the shoulder strap Supreme bag when he's saying, like, Oh, yeah. And the guys that wear shul- the shoulder strap, hey, fuck you, dude. That shit made me laugh <laughs> so damn hard, dude. Oh, my God. Here we are <laughs> laughing over Chris Leo. He's the fucking most popular problem of the world right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, it's I don't know. I mean, yeah, huh? what is your, what's your favorite one? Uh, I don't probably probably the the um is, is this your crocodile? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <I'll> that. <laughs> Yo, that's awesome, dude. Fuck. It yeah, that's that's a solid one. My favorite, my one of my other favorite ones is his, his impression of Keanu Reeves. That one's great. That was on oh, a, a, a it's spot did, on. Did, the one. One bit that never caught fire that I thought was hilarious. It was during he had like the, a thirty minute special where he did the um this is probably this just bring more flame to him. But um the uh dude the Stephen King bit or not was it not 
Stephen King, the freaking um. Which one? Dude, I can't I'm think. I'm gonna lose my mind because I, I just, I just forgot the the guy in the wheelchair. Yeah, that's Stephen. Oh, Stephen Hawking. Uh, Stephen Hawking. The Stephen Hawking bit that yeah. he did was wait. What hilarious. was what was that one on? I can't remember that one. It, that was on his 30 minute special where the uh, comedians of the world he and said Netflix like one? something. Yeah. I got to watch it. I got something, something I gotta along the lines it. of like rolling on the floor laughing unless you're <laughs> Stephen Hawking. <laughs> Stephen Hawking. Damn, yeah. dude, that's funny. I, I got to rewatch that one. I can't remember that one. Holy shit. Yeah. So do you guys have uh all right. Well, I think we pretty much touched enough base on Crystalia. What do you think? As far yeah, as as I far mean, as as accusations and stuff like that, I mean, yeah, I just, I think lastly, what I'll say is, um, and you can chime in too. I just, uh, obviously it sucks, you know, whatever. But hey, look, if it's true, he deserves everything that's coming to him. I'll just say that. As much yeah. as I love the guy, dude, what he did is not right, and nobody should be doing this and that, but. Um, what I will say is, uh, people are really throwing around the term grooming all over Twitter and that's, Mm -hmm. maybe that's okay. You know, maybe it is. However, grooming in a sense is, is when you know somebody, you trust them and you know, you, you love them in a way or whatever, not like a fan, but like, you know, somebody that you've known for your life or known throughout your life. And over time, they groom you to do whatever that will lead to a sexual act or whatever. So Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the correct word. A sense of, I mean, it is a sense of manipulation, but like, I don't know, man. I, I, I think, and there's people throwing out the turn or throwing out, um, scenarios where like he's blackmailed girls with their nudes to hook up with them. And like, that might be a thing, but like, I haven't seen any screenshots of that stuff. So if you're going to say that, back it up. You know what I mean? And I'm thinking on both sides of the fence, you know, like if that's true, great. Send him in to Twitter or put him on blast, do it. That's, and, and then he'll, he'll face those repercussions like he should, like anybody should. Uh, but Mm -hmm. if, if nothing's there to back it up, then you, I mean, you can say it, but you know, why should anybody believe you? And there's going to be people that believe them. Sh- trust me. Like, people believe anything they see on Twitter. And, you yeah. know, if you're going to say something, if you're going to accuse somebody of something, make sure you have proof. Not saying that I'm trying to back him up, but especially if you want justice for whatever he did, you got to have proof, obviously. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah, man, I mean, it sucks. And, you know, that's that for me. So. Yeah, I mean, that's, you pretty much summed it all up. If if it's true, shame on him. He deserves yeah, it for sure, hundred percent. And and if it's and if it's true, but to the extent of where it's not as bad as what everyone's saying, I I I hope that he can bounce back. That he takes this as just like a just like a like don't. I mean, he's already fucked up, but just like yeah, take it as a learning point and maybe just back off with some of the things that he does for right now and just focus on not being a, a creep i guess yeah even though it's 10 years ago but yeah but you yeah. know that that shit like that doesn't get forgotten <laughs> yeah no yeah um yeah i mean and for everybody listening how about you just focus on people your own age <laughs> don't be yeah. a, don't be a for real <laughs> uh <laughs> i wanted to ask you while we're doing this um you're obviously a fan of comedy. Have you ever thought about doing comedy, even for fun? Yeah. So what's um the the thing that that holds me back from doing comedy, and it surprising enough that doesn't hold me back from podcasting is that um I have a I have a speech impediment, which you probably heard like throughout this. Who cares? So, huh? Who cares? You got that, dude. Yeah, I, that's the thing but it's uh it's it's something that's like not i don't want to say held me back like my whole life but it's something that bothers me so it's just like getting over that hump yeah i mean seeing the community tonight at the uh improv that i went to um gives me a little bit more hope that like 
I mean, no one judged anybody. There was some oh, god awful jokes. I'm sure. Yeah. And everyone just clapped and stuff. Well, you know so why, dude? I've, you know why people do? Sorry to interrupt you, but I just gotta say this. You know why people uh, applaud, even the people that suck, is because it takes balls to get up there. And you going up does, there is does. just like you're just telling the people in the crowd, like. I'm doing this, and you're sitting there, so what's good, dude? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. So but yeah, no, I, I get I it, though. To. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see, like, uh, does, um, does, like, having a bit of nervousness uh, add to that a little bit? Like, do you think that uh, your speech impediment kicks in a little more when you might be, like, nervous? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's um, tough. Um, from... Any when I was in high school and stuff, or it just I had to do like a presentation in college and stuff, mm-hmm. it would get so much worse. Like when I'm with with my friends and stuff, you can't even tell that I have it. Yeah. But as soon as I go in front of people and I know that I'm being judged, and I don't know if it's I I guess I'll I'll have to try and open mic, but I don't know if it's just being in a community where people. People know me, so yeah. like then if I screw up, they'll laugh at me, or I'll get shit after class, or something like that. No, but it definitely does. It definitely does, and make it's, it worse. I mean, and shit, dude. it's definitely all in your head. Oh so. yeah, and look, dude, it's I've only ever done one five minute set, and that was the longest five minutes. I said this earlier, and dude, it's nerve wracking. <laughs> it's nerve wracking. But you know what, man? Like if you plan to do it and you do it. Mm-hmm. Once you step off the stage, a fucking boulder is lifted off of your shoulders. It's so crazy, and you feel so good about yourself. And, you know, surprisingly, mm-hmm. the first time I did, I actually did pretty well, and I was, like, stoked about it, and it was, you know, it was dope. And when I was done, I was like, all right, I'm good. And the last time I did it was in December, <laughs> so it's been six months since I fucking did it. But there's a lot of the the place like where I live there's not very many open mics so it's really tough to find like a, a spot where I can do one the San Francisco is like For 45 sure. minutes away from me so getting there during the week which is only when open mics happen open mics because I would like during the week yeah during the week because like what I've heard through the grapevine is clubs don't really want to do open mics on Friday nights when people are like looking for a night out you know what I mean like they don't want to that's true they don't want to like have people go to their club, see a shitty open mic, and then just not go back to their club. So it makes sense, but uh, it's also, it's, uh, you know, it's true. tough. But I would say do it, man. You really just got to do it. And listening to Rogan just really pushed me over the edge. I listened to an episode with him and I think Donnell Rawlings, and I literally, it's, I, I booked my spot down in L.A., and it was yeah. it was sick, dude. You just got to do it. Well, where'd you go in L.A.? Um. Oh, dude, it's actually hella sad. I went to this place called Burt's Backroom, and it's like a it's like a really small open mic spot, so mm-hmm. very very intimate. And um, I th- I went there and I did my thing. Do you know Do you know the podcast Going Deep with Chad and JT? I do not. Okay, so they're a couple of SoCal guys, and they have like a really they're like bros, but they're hilarious. They're like. They're, like, all about stoke and fucking making sure that you keep a fucking <laughs> positive lifestyle and stuff like that. They're really cool, but sure. I, I was a fan of theirs, and I messaged one of them, and I saw... So when you sign up, there was, like, a roster of who was going at what time, and they were in hour frames, so he was in the hour before I was. So when I got there, I was, like, there, and I saw he was there, so I waited out the door. I met him... Mm-hmm. And I did this little, and I we, it was cool. Like it was a cool little exchange. And then I did this at like a really small open mic club. And dude, they just closed down. They they closed the place down because of COVID. They couldn't afford to keep the place, so it's sad. But you Dang, could you literally sad. could just sign up. You got to pay five bucks, but that's not a big deal. Five bucks for for five minutes or ten minutes. And um, yeah, it was it was cool, man. But it was sad to see that that place closed down. So. Yeah, dang. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. I think tonight there was maybe 30 people there. 40? That's pretty yeah, good, dude. It, they did karaoke? Yeah, we had, yeah, we had a share with the karaoke. There was, there was this dude that... So the karaoke guys, there was probably like a group of like 10 or 15 of them. Nice. And they're getting sick and tired of the comedy. Oh, and we watched yeah. this, this dude sing this song. It was a freestyle about his fourth baby mama oh, and Jesus. i'll tell you what it was 
the funniest thing. Oh. The, the second funniest thing I saw the whole night. Was it funny because it was bad or it was funny because it was facts and like good? It was it was it was funny because it was so out there and just like shouldn't be happening, but it was happening. <laughs> this guy didn't give a fuck about anything that he that people would think about him. That's hilarious. What a legend. Yeah, his singing voice was hilarious too. And he was he was dressed in a gold uh genie outfit. No way, dude. What a lurk. Yeah, Milwaukee's crazy. Damn, dude. How's uh how so everything over there seems to be opening, huh? Or was it you said it wasn't really ever shut down? I mean, no, it was. I it was shut down good for two two months, three months. Nice. And I mean, our governor nice, but, just know. like opened it up. So the governor, like I forget, I think it was April twenty seventh. Yeah. was when our like um our uh, lockdown was done mm -hmm. so it got called back like a week before like the governor was like okay we're just gonna let things go out so that it got let out on a thursday that thursday night there was people drinking oh shit wisconsin people don't care They're, they were just we like go, we go to a they're just like at the bars yeah, they Damn. really don't care. Shit, dude. Like, it's the only place I wear a mask. Hold on. Unless I have to. I'll... So you guys shut down in April. Or I don't I don't remember the actual day. All I know is I was locked down for like. Okay. Because we're in two, California. Two months or three months. Yeah, dude. It's been three months for me like two days ago. and Well, I'm back at work now finally. But I we we closed down on March 16th. Which was well, that was the day that I I my work closed down. So um, mm -hmm. I think the weekend before things were starting to close, and I went out to the bars that weekend, and it was a ghost town. I think everybody was just fucking spooked about it. So you know, it it was interesting, man. It was it was one of those things where everybody was just caught with their pants down, you know, and like I don't yeah, know. I mean, I don't know when things are gonna start opening up officially or when people are gonna start feeling safe, but. Yeah, especially after all these protests, man. I think uh, cases are going up, but don't quote me on that. I'm not factually sure, but we'll I see. Think, I think the cases are, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. And I honestly, to be complete, yeah. dude, to be completely honest, I would not mind a, and not that I want people to get the fucking virus or anything, but I wouldn't mind being on quarantine again. The first day back at work, I was like, dude, I'm ready to be back on quarantine. I was not ready to be out to work again. She was a drag. Yeah, I. I like working from home a lot more than actually being in the office. <laughs> yeah, shit, man. What did, did you guys have any plans for the summer that just got postponed? Not, no, not really. I mean, we. I'm just trying to make money so I can move out. So yeah. Oh, dude, you got to move out, dude. Best move ever. <laughs> dude, I that's swear. what I'm saying. But like, it's just like, I don't know if I want to continue being in Milwaukee. Or if I want to go spread my wings somewhere else. Well, I'll say this, so. dude. California, expensive as fuck. So just be aware of that. <laughs> it's not cheap. California here. would be dope for me to end up. I love California. I've been out there so many times. Yeah. It's a great place I, to be. I it's could, just so expensive to live. I could see myself being like, that fits the type of lifestyle that I, that I want to live. But if it, if it wasn't so expensive. And I can't tell... Going because um, I talk a lot in my podcast, the ten episodes that I've done, um, that like I want to do comedy, but after tonight, I think I still want to. But I think growing a podcast is more prevalent to me yeah. now than actually. I feel it, dude. Wanting to do comedy. Yeah, you know what? I I I can really agree with you on that one because I really did want to do comedy, and I still do. Like over the quarantine, dude, I've written so much material, so much, and some mm -hmm. of it, some of it might be hack, but some of it's you know, if I find the right wording and stuff like that, it could turn out to be something, but it's For like sure. the, the freedom of the freedom and effortlessness on podcasting is just like a different level. Like, oh, yeah. especially because I'm, I'm such a dumbass and I like to just talk out of my ass. It's so much more fun mm -hmm. on, it's so For much sure. more fun to talk on a podcast, you know, and it's so much more free and you're free to say whatever you want and you don't have to worry about timing. You don't have to worry about, articulating something to get across to a crowd and stuff like that. I mean, 
maybe you want to do that on a podcast, but it's not anywhere in comparison to stand up comedy. So that's why I really like it. And I, you know, this is, I guess this will be my 27th episode. And oh, dang. It's been fun, dude. It's been real. It's been like a game changer. It's been really good. So I would say keep doing your podcast for sure, weekly. Don't take a break. Yeah, that's. No, the I haven't taken a break yet. And yeah, I mean, some of some of my episodes have been garbage, like got off. Oh, so of mine, but uh, so of mine for sure. But I, I think it's just like a learning curve and just putting it out. And like, I like the whole like like marketing aspect of like making a podcast. And yeah, creating it's fun. Social media stuff. It's fun to do something different, yeah. you know, especially because you created yours during quarantine, right? Yeah, I I've I've. The first podcast I listened to was Joe Rogan, and that was like four to five years ago. Yeah. And I've been listening to comedy podcasts like daily for the past four or five years. And I was going through like, I would like last year around this time, I was like, oh, I'm going to become a streamer because I was prevalent into watching Fortnite stuff. And then that kind of died down and I figured out that. Fortnite King, dude. (laughs) Man. Yeah. The Fortnite stuff, seeing Ninja and everybody just making. I Bank. never got into Fortnite. I couldn't. I'm not into those. Those. You're lucky. Yeah, I'm not into those like an- two animated games. You know, I'm into like realistic For Call sure. of Duty shit. Um, yeah. But I feel you, dude. I yeah. I I listened to Joe Rogan quite a while back, and then I I still wasn't fully into podcasts. And then um, once I got into my job, I I had so much time to listen to music, so I was like. Maybe I'll just listen. Uh, maybe I'll try and learn shit while I'm working. So then I started listening to Rogan, and then it branched me out to like yep. Tom Segura, everybody really, and then that's where it started. And then you know here we are, episode twenty seven of my podcast and episode ten of yours. So you know it's sick. Yeah, it's crazy. It's fun, man. It's a game changer, and uh, all we can it do really is just is. keep doing. You know, keep on keeping on. Um, yeah. Well, shit, man. Uh, I don't want to keep you up too long, but um, it's ten thirty for me. I'm probably gonna pass out soon. So this was dope, yeah, dude. It's Twelve thirty for me. Yeah, dude. Oh, <laughs> right, so it is three hours. Uh, it was two hours. So you're two hours ahead. Two hours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good shit. Um. Well, you know what? I think we touched base on pretty much everything that, unless you have anything else that you want to talk about. Nah, just check out our podcast. Hell yeah! If you're still listening, we, we by the way. Dopes. Check out Chris's podcast. Yeah. Check out my podcast if you're listening on his. Um, this is fun, dude, and this is only the beginning of the road. So keep on doing your thing, yeah. man. We're gonna be in touch for sure. So um, yeah, for sure. We'll I'm talk down to create things like this too. If, like hell yeah, man. Talk about comedy whenever, dude. For or whatever. sure. I'm so, especially because we found out how easy this is. I thought this whole recording situation was gonna be a nightmare, but it's not at all. Yeah, same. Well, fuck for sure. It. Good shit, man. Hey, good to meet you too, by the way, and your cousin Joe. I'll see you later, man. Yeah. See you later, man. Good shit. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. See you guys later, man. Later.